You ready to do this? Let's do it. Pastors, kids can sympathize. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm really excited for the human videos that roll out in the student ministry. <laughs> Welcome to the CM Jumpstart Podcast. I'm Dan Matier. I'm Brent Colby. This is episode 14. The CM Jumpstart Podcast is a place where we hook the jumper cables up to your children's ministry and we flip the switch. New episodes available monthly at cmjumpstart.com. And you may notice something a little different about episode 14 is that we are in video. Ah. Yeah, so audio listeners, the feed will come to you just like it has been going this whole time. And if you're just stumbling across this audio, you can always find it at cmjumpstart.com. Otherwise, we're gonna be starting posting, we're going to be starting to post video episodes of what we're talking about. And we thought we have so much cool stuff that we would love for you to actually be able to see and so we thought this would be a great way for us to make that connection between what we're talking about and then what you're actually seeing. So here's our first take at it. We hope you like it. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about doing something that every church does, welcoming first-time guests. Uh, something really practical. Everybody does it, but how do we do it? How can we do it better? But we also got some cool resources we're going to be showing here on the video as well. Yeah, that's right. But before we get too into it, Brent, how you been doing? Good. We've been busy. I've, I've had a chance to go around and visit a bunch of cool churches here in Washington State. Uh, we we're at Destiny Christian Center last weekend. That was great. Cool people down there. Uh, Bill and Becca Bates are the pastors. Just lots of fun. And we've been visiting. Uh, you'll see uh, I had a chance to connect with Dustin Larson, children's pastor at Church on the Ridge. Uh, we've been hanging out at East Ridge, your church. We've been yeah. This has been busy. We've been all over the place. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. We've been uh, busy as well, but it seems like just one of those things. We got stuff coming up. My wife has a an eye issue. She had to wear an, a pirate eye patch. Uh, she didn't have to wear a pirate eye patch, but her eye hurt, and we had one. So it's been a really fun week at our house. <laughs> if there's any home that I know has enough costume regalia to have a, co a pirate eye patch, you would have at least a collection. It was of them. still in the plastic too. I don't know where we got <laughs> a pirate eye patch we hadn't used I'm yet. I'm sure you had it. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's hey, cool. we got some cool resources we want to show uh, on the video here for children's ministry. Yeah. So this first one you can kind of see behind us is a website called ministry2children.com. That's ministry-2-children.com. And Dan, you've checked this one out before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. This is a blog that somebody put together, and it's just become huge. I don't know how it started, but there's just tons and tons of stuff on here. What, the greatest thing about it is it's all for free. Uh, and it's not you're, you're gonna not find real high quality, ready to, to go turnkey stuff. But if you're looking for something, search ministrytochildren.com because you'll find something that'll either help you or at least inspire you. I love this. I see they have a custom search set up. So I'm assuming that if you're doing a topic or on a Bible character, you could probably plug a name in there and then see a lot of content. Yeah, in that's that how I ran across this. I was looking for something else for my, I think it was a Joshua story. I just need a, one little more element. Brought me to this, and it, it linked me to a video um, that I used, end up using for the lesson. It was really great. That's cool. Another one I've seen before in the past is from a ministry called LifeChurch.tv. And if you've been online or, or searched for stuff, you've probably come across some of their content. Yeah, Craig they, Rochelle's church. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they've really gone out of their way. I mean, even based their whole model around online ministry tools and resources and even reaching people like that. So you can see here we checked out lifechurch.tv and we've clicked on a tab in the upper right corner that says resources and right off the get-go you can see that how they have a ton, ton of stuff. They even ask the question, how can we equip your church? Yeah. And Life Church is a multi-campus church model, but kind of the leader of that movement. They, I think they have like 20, 30, 40 campuses. And because they have to put their children's ministries uh, up for their other campuses to use, at some point they just said, why don't we just put it up for the kingdom to use? So you're going to get resources that one of the largest churches, I mean, we're talking top three largest churches in America, uses in their children's ministry, and they give it to you for free. That's cool. So I'm just clicking here. I scroll down on the resource page. There's open.lifechurch.tv if you want to go straight to it. But it looks like this is where they host all their stuff. So it looks like you just click download and completely free. It's yours yeah. to use. And unlike a lot of free resources, they actually go out of their way to help you use it for free. Which is nice. <laughs> you don't got to find your way around <laughs> to get it uh, creatively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one thing we talked about last week that we wanted to come back to is we talked about different ways that we've used YouTube yeah. in our children's ministry services. Right, uh, which by the way has revolutionized my children's ministry. Yeah. You mentioned having the dance the dance time. We added a dance break into our, our uh, kids zone, our kids church. Awesome, nice. just wanted to say, did awesome. A, did Dubstep Kitty translate for you guys? Dubstep Kitty, I couldn't really get the moves <laughs> down. Uh, I don't know if anybody's watched Dubstep Kitty. It's just, a, it's a cat, so it's hard to replicate what the cat's doing. And the cat's not actually moving. It's 
clip together. But but what what we did is a, a dance called the interlude dance. Yeah. It's out of like some University of Northern Iowa or something. They do it at their basketball games. Totally fun. Interlude dance. Check it out on YouTube. Nice. It's super fun. So I thought we could show you guys a little bit how we, how you can actually go about grabbing a YouTube video from the internet and putting it on your computer so that you can plug it right into whether you're using PowerPoint or ProPresenter or just opening videos or stuff like that. Yeah. So um, I have here a video clip. You can see it's kind of queued up and we hit play, it'll just play. So first step, find the video you want. And second step is this, up at the very top you can see there is a URL. Mm -hmm. Now um, computer people, you know what that is. If not, it's the address that your content is found at. So by highlighting that and copying it, you can go to one resource that we talked about last week is called KeepVid. Yeah. So KeepVid is a site that lets you paste the links of the video that you want into this little box here. And when you click download, it'll give you links to download the video. So I just copied that and I'm gonna paste it in here. And when I click download, it's gonna give me some options down below where I can choose to download that video. So well, one thing that tripped me up, make sure you click the download next to the URL, not below it. That's an ad that'll, yeah. <laughs> that'll take you somewhere else. Yeah, that's uh, someone's, <laughs> someone's evil trick to yeah. get you to click on it. So when I click download there, now I see an option of, of files that I can download. You see how big they are, there's different formats. If you don't know which one is which, uh, MP4 is uh, most players will play that format. It'll look good on your screen. And then of course you can get different sizes and hmm. the higher definition or bigger files, the smaller uh, resolution are gonna be smaller files. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And you can put that into ProPresenter or PowerPoint, whatever you use and just drop the video in there. Boom, it's a piece of cake. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so one of the resources I wanted to talk about is something I've used in my church. Uh, it's called What's in the Bible. Okay. Um, Phil Vischer, when I say Phil Vischer, what do you think of? VeggieTales. VeggieTales. He is the guy that created VeggieTales. And after creating VeggieTales, I kind of heard an interview with him where he said, VeggieTales was awesome. The purpose of VeggieTales was to communicate to children that God made you yeah. and he loves you very much. And so as he got around to producing kind of round two of curriculum and material, he thought for What's in the Bible, he wanted to dig a little deeper. And I think he's really hit that on the head. You can check out What's in the Bible at whatsinthebible.com. And just to give you a little feel for it, I want to play a little clip okay. of, I think, so this is the story of creation told through Popsicle Stick Theater with Chester Widget. So this is great. Just to get a feel for it. Yeah. Everything. Everything? Pretty much. God, the man, the world. It's a genesis, man. It's the beginning of everything. Okay. Let's hear it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away... I think you're telling the wrong story. What? Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> here we go. A long time ago, right about uh, here, uh, there was God. God is a cloud? It makes about as much sense as showing him as an old man with whiskers. I see your point. The Bible says God is love, but when we tried to show him as a heart, he just looked like a valentine. Mm. Too hallmark. Right. He appeared to the Israelites as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The fire thing was a little scary. So we decided to go with the cloud. I think we made it. So you can see, they kind of walk through the story of creation. This It's creative. Yeah. It's funny. Um, and it's really accessible. So and biblically accurate, too, which is his goal, is to really show kids what is in the it Bible. Is. In fact, uh, of this first volume, I think the first two episodes we're talking about, what is the Bible, Yeah. and then um, how it's relevant. I mean, they talk about how the Bible was assembled, the different mm. translations. They even talk about the Apocrypha and why the Apocrypha, if you know what that is or isn't, it's the, there's a certain number of books between the Old and New Testament that some traditions include, yeah. but some don't, so they talk about the differences there. I mean, it's really fascinating. Wow. I had, after we used this all last year, and every Sunday, almost without fail, I'd have a leader come to me and say, I had never even heard that before. So the content was great. Um, and then the, the model that they have set up, so there's four main videos, there's kind of an intro fun video, there's a second video which is kind of the body of it, and a third video which is kind of a wrap it up video. And between those, those sections, there's uh, small group activities. So if you have a large group, small group, or if you're just in a large group and want some, um, some actual activity sheets and questions, for, to, you can either ask them from up front or have them break into groups and talk about it. Yeah. It worked really well for us. Um, some criticisms I would have for it, I would mm -hmm. say it's not a completed set yet. So we worked yeah. all the way through volumes, I think one through seven, and then got to the end. Uh, we thought they'd be cranking them out faster than we were using them, and it was not the case. So um, they're continuing to, to create it, so it's still in formation. 
But I would say from the first to the, the last one they made, it's been very consistent. Yeah. Um, but the video format, so they do a lot of puppets and stuff. And what they do with the puppets, for some of the younger kids, they love it. Some of the older kids who aren't getting all the humor, they think it's a little bit lame. So yeah. it kind of missed some of that older elementary kid demographic okay. that I was looking for. Um, but for the most part, we really like using it. Yeah. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to give this away today, right? That's right. Okay, so how can they win this? You can win this first volume of What's in the Bible by emailing us at cmjumpstart at gmail.com. cmjumpstart at gmail.com. Leave us a comment or question regarding anything about this episode 14. From that, we'll highlight your comment or question next week, yeah. and you will be the winner of our prize. Awesome. Next month. Next month, thanks. Yeah, next month. Well, today we're talking about welcoming first-time guests in your children's ministry. Just about every, any environment, any church I've ministered in, this is something that we've tried to make a key part of every week. Because it's important. You want to make first-time guests feel welcome. That's right. And I would say you get one first impression. That's it. Yeah. So w when I started thinking about this topic this week and kind of preparation for our discussion today, I was reminded of a post I read on 22words.com. Okay. This guy highlighted a village in China that was located at an elevation of 1,300 feet. Now that's not the odd part about it. The odd part about it was that the first impression that this village gave was that the only way you could access it was through this cable car. So check this out. There is where you start, it, way off in the distance, at the end of these cables, you can see a little house. That is where you will get on the cable car and ride your way up that's the to car. the village. That's the car, little, little box, little iron box. <laughs> it's not even a cable car. <laughs> it's like a little platform suspended above. This looks like something you might do at camp or like some adventure trip. I would never do that at camp, but it looks like, yeah, you might. This is literally the only way you can get up to this village now. I'm sure there's trails and stuff that you can take, but this is it. So you can see why oh, below my goodness. there's a huge valley and it looks like very treacherous. So they've adopted this approach to getting into their village. And you'll like to hear it, this guy right here. So this guy has been operating the, the cables since the village started. Yeah. But the way he got the gig was that his dad was like the leader of the village. And so he just assigned his son to this task. Pastor's kids can sympathize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So he's like the kid running the sound system at 10 years old in the right. back of the church and is there to this day. So anyways. That's him, and then here's just a shot of the oh guys. My goodness. They also have to grease the wires every month, grease the cables. So one guy's job is to ride along and with grease bucket, stand up on the very top of this rig, and then grease the cables so oh. that things don't get stuck moving back and forth. So after people have traversed this cable car, they, they probably need to do a lot to make those people feel welcome once they arrive. <laughs> I <because> think so. <laughs> otherwise, they're never coming back to this village. That is crazy. Yeah. That yeah. is crazy. So anyways, I think we do a little better job than this. But I'm curious, Dan, what do you guys do yeah. for first impressions or welcome in first time guests at your church? You know, we, we have uh, had to kind of balance this because on the one hand, you want to do something cool, right? But on the other hand, you battle limitations of budget and time. If you're in a, an environment where you have a lot of first time guests or even several every week, it can eat up big time service time. Yeah. And, and so uh, what we try to do is just kind of package something real quick. This is what we came up with. I kind of have my... Uh, 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 my demonstration here we had a water bottles that we put our logo on uh, and the idea is that's cool every kid wants a water bottle you know you're gonna bring it to school and when they do they're gonna they're gonna bring the the, the name with us put our website on there inside we put a few things we put a little Bible bucks from our store we put a, a very limited amount of candy because you don't know how the parents are going to feel about candy yeah. and a little toy sticky hand and then also just a really thin because it's all that'll fit in there just bookmark size flyer about what we offer for kids and that's for mom and dad that's cool. uh, but here's the thing um we kind of had to cut back on our visitor budget and these costs eh, they're like a dollar each but we ran out of them so mm -hmm. uh this is what we've moved to now uh we do t-shirts for vbs every okay here cool um but uh, we strategize to keep the t-shirts very generic so we just have just our kids logo on it. it doesn't say VBS 2012 you know beyond the gold or something because that's gonna be garbage after your VBS is done right, right? we always have leftover shirts though first time guests don't know that it was the shirt from three years ago right <laughs> that's so cool. we're like hey you want a shirt yeah, that's awesome same thing that they're wearing our logo around there wherever they go that's cool Built so in advertising the shirt in perpetuity lives on to be handed out and that's yeah. that's great and t-shirts i mean what kid doesn't want a t-shirt it's like gold so yeah. it, it's that's kind of cool and it's quick too if you go Welcome, here you go, feel special. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, Man, at our church, we just had a really simple thing. We didn't have any handouts or things like that, but it was just a simple postcard. So yeah. the families would sign in, they'd check we're a first-time guest, 
and then we would collect those on Sunday, and then on Monday morning we'd see who we had, and if we had an address, which yeah. you don't always, we didn't always get, we yeah. just had a welcome to our church card. We'd oh. fill it out. It was kind of a generic note saying, hey, welcome to our church. We're glad you visited, and we'd send it. We would often it, often address it to the child. You know, yeah. when a child gets excited yeah, about yeah. something, oh, it's huge. Um, so that was a big win for us. That's great. I also visited a church just a few days ago uh, called Cedar Park. It's mm-hmm. a church. Um, uh, you can find out about it at cedarpark.org. But what they did, I thought, was a great idea. Um, the children's pastor there, his name is Virgil Brown, oversees all the children and families' ministries. Uh, he has, uh, they did the cool water bottle oh, thing. So sweet. they had this. And I think this was the same sort of thing. They got a ton of these for a specific event. Yeah. But they made them generic so that they could use them afterwards. So they had these mugs filled with some candy. They did also um, a Father's Day event where they had coffee mugs. I think it was a Father's Day event. but this, So they'd have this in a bag, just a Cedar Park Kids mug. And um, the last thing was just a, they would often hand out like a little CD or stuff. But the cool part about this was this. You had this bright green bag. And so Virgil can tell everyone who works yeah. in his area, if you ever see a kid wearing a bright green bag, you yeah. know that he or she and their family are probably a first time visitor. So yeah. go out of your way, say hello, make that connection because we've tagged all their kids. That's a good idea. <laughs> I actually heard a church that did a similar thing, but kind of uh, took it even one step up. They gave all their visitors helium balloons. <laughs> yes. So that, that you could see all the way down the hall. That's that awesome. First time guests had a helium balloon. This bag costs less than two bucks for that's Virgil great. to make. So, And that's the kind of thing that a kid's going to keep. They're not going to, like an adult might kind of throw it in their closet or, or even toss it, you know, but, but that's going to be precious to them because that's cool. Yeah, it's totally cool. So I had a chance to visit Dustin Larson at Church on the Ridge and kind of interview and ask him about what they do for their children's ministries. And I want to kind of show that with you here. Yeah. I'm here today in Snoqualmie, Washington at Church on the Ridge with Dustin Larson. Dustin, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, glad to. So we're here in your uh, your early childhood check-in area. I want to kind of ask you a little bit about what it's like for a first-time guest to come and check in at your church. Yeah, well, uh, the key is our first impressions team. They're the ones that really, you know, uh, make a significant, you know, impact in, you know, our first time guests that come in. They're outside waiting for new families to get here. As soon as they, you know, spot a new family, you know, they immediately ask them, hey, how can I help you? Uh, You know, super excited to, you know, have you here this morning and, you know, show them, you know, around the church and, and where to uh, check in their kids and, yeah. and whatnot. And your guys' church is on a split level. Your children's yeah. ministry is on the first floor and second floor. So I assume they make sure they figure out which age yeah. the kids are and where they go. Absolutely. And that's what makes it, you know, it's so critical to have good signage. And that's one of the things that, you know, we've really, you know, had to pay attention to is, you know, really making it easy for, you know, new families to be able to, you know, find their way around. And so, yeah. you know, our, our first time impressions team, you know, is, you know, they're trained and, and know, okay, what are we supposed to do when we have a, you know, a six month old come in versus right. a, a fifth grader. So they know where yeah. they are. So this area we're in right now, this is a place set up for two and a half through kindergarten. That's right. So if I was walking my kids in for the first time, what would be kind of the process for us to get our kids checked in? Well, we have our, our kids on the Ridge check-in team that are up here waiting uh, for our first impressions, uh, people to, you know, bring in a new family. And they, you know, they come in and, you know, greet them right away. They, they know who the first impressions people are. So they, you know, we're able to recognize, you know, when a new family comes. And your team and all so wears t-shirts, our, right? Yeah. yeah, our team all wears a, a Kids on the Ridge t-shirt. So they're easy to identify and, it, you know, makes it, uh, you know, have that feeling, of, you know, that is safe, which it is. And so they come in and uh, our Kids on the Ridge uh, check-in team walks them through the whole you know check-in process and also gives them a form that they fill out so that we can stay in contact with the family and let them know about any you know upcoming events or anything that we got going on so then that form gives you the information you need to follow up with the family after Absolutely, they've come yeah. on sunday so you come you visit they check their kids out using the tag that you've given them yeah and then on monday after sunday's done and everyone's home kind of what's the next step for you guys to follow up with them The next step is we send a email, or if we don't have an email uh, for the parent, we will get an address. And so it's either an email or a letter that goes home to the parent. It lets them know even more, you know, information about the program and just thanking them for, you know, the the effort that we knew it took them uh, just to get here to church. And uh, following up with that, uh, 
we also send home a postcard to the, to the child letting them know, hey, we were super excited to have you here and we can't wait to see you again. So, cool, cool, yeah. sounds good. That's like the gist of what, uh, what Dustin had to share there. And what kind of strikes me about what you've said and what he said, their first impressions team, the importance of that personal connection. It's not yeah. about a slick c computer program or a high tech setup or something with people running around with iPads or something cool or trendy like that. It's mm -hmm. really about the people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the computer whole check-in thing, I know a lot of churches are going that way. There's a lot of motivation to do that. From my perspective, the biggest motivation is people will give you information about who they are if you're, if you're doing that kind of a system. Whereas on a piece of paper, they're less likely to do that. Uh, and you had mentioned like if you can get their address. If you're checking them in on a computer and you say, hey, to get your kids checked in, we'd really love some information. People are very uh, open to say, yeah, let me give you the information. Uh, and you don't have to take that to add them to your, your, your uh, cold call list or something. But, but you could just go, hey, we want to send you this email. We want to send you this letter. And, and uh, even call and follow up and say, how was your child's experience? They're usually very open to that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And people are usually pretty open about sharing information when it has to do with keeping their, their kids kid. safe, yeah. making sure that there's contact information there for if something goes wrong. Absolutely. I know for the churches I've been a part of, the number one most effective way to collect information about whomever is visiting is always through the children's ministry. Absolutely. And so using that uh, mentality, a lot of times churches are keen on helping you do the best job to make sure that that impression is a good one. Yeah. Well, thanks for checking us out this month, episode 14. If you just heard us on audio, we really encourage you to check out the video. There's a lot of cool stuff we showed here uh, on the podcast. Um, but uh, hey, don't forget, email us at cmjumpstart at gmail.com. We're going to be giving this away next month to a question or comment that someone submitted. We'll just select it randomly. Um, and so, yeah, so what's in the Bible, volume one, we'd love to give it away, get it into your hands and let you have a, a take in, see what you think about it. Yeah, if you've got resources that you think would be valuable to share with others, whether they're specifically children's ministry or just might be a cool addition to your children's ministry, send those to us. We'd love to share them here on the podcast. Yep, so until next time, see you then. So Dan, this video has over 500 million views. This has? Yeah. <laughs> 500 million views. Yeah. I tried showing it to my wife the other day and she didn't get it. Is it, what, is this Korean? Yeah, Sai is his name. Is that his son there? <laughs> I don't know. He's been like all over the TV. I bet everyone would recognize this That little kid looks just like, it was like mini me there. <laughs> I don't get it either. It's Do just, you know what he's saying? Yeah, he's saying, I got 500 million views. <laughs> Shaving cream in the fan. I think it's a song about horse racing. I'm not sure. I, there's a lot of horses. Yeah. That's him at the 24 hour fitness. <laughs> wow. Playing, uh, I would not truckers. sit next to that guy in the uh, <laughs> sauna room. But would you rest your head on his shoulder? This. I think I think that's his uncle. 500 million views. 500 million views. Well, it's because of special effects. Just watch. That's pretty. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's worth 100 million right that there. That was. I don't know, Brett. I don't think Gangnam Style is going to catch on in my children's ministry uh, dance-off. You should talk to your pastor. I think he might uh, be receptive towards this. The dance is a little advanced for me, too. I'm really excited for the human videos that roll out in the student ministry. <laughs> we'll cut it before the there's yoga. A, there's a little uh, English there. Yeah. I like the duck boat. I got one of those, you know, the goose boat. That's probably... We'll probably cut it before that probably, there. Probably adequate there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut.